Wow, you guys are feeling it. <laughs> wow. That feels like some energy. I think you got that distinction. I'd say you took that one on. What would you say? <laughs> you guys ready to go deep? I mean, it's really time. We're ending the eve or the, the evening. We're heading into the evening of day two, Unstoppable Entrepreneur. It's time. I mean, we've gone pretty darn deep already, have we not? And it's very rewarding in and of itself to go deep, even though it's not easy sometimes, is it not? But don't you feel it has its own reward? There's a different quality to going deep. You can't really put your finger on it. You don't even really know what it is. You just feel it, don't you? And don't we cherish those moments? Don't we cherish those relationships? Don't we cherish depth in our life? Don't we? So I think building that capacity to go deep, to kind of keep going deeper, it's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. It doesn't always reveal stuff you want to see or know or hear but it's powerful. And all that stuff we've already distinguished is just what's stopping us anyway. So damn right we want to reveal it so we can give it up. That's the benefit of going deep. That's the result. This next exercise is called the unstoppable self. The unstoppable self. And I want you to imagine a question real quick. What would be possible in your life if you took how big you currently are, how big you think you are? So we all have a concept of how big we are, right? Do you kind of have a concept of how big you are? Or maybe a feeling of how big you are? You feel a certain level of largeness of what you're capable of, what you're up to, don't you? Yeah. What would be possible if you took how big you currently think or feel you are and you multiplied it times infinity? What would be possible? Because there was a time when we believed the universe revolves around the earth. Those people were a bit self-centered, wouldn't you say? Just a bit. <laughs> when if you sailed across an ocean, you'd fall off the face of the planet. I don't know what they thought it was, some sort of infinite waterfall. I've always tried to imagine what they were thinking. Like, it was an infinite waterfall or something, you know? Like, what the heck were they thinking? Oh, you're laughing now. And a lousy hundred years ago, the possibility of taking flight or that there were smaller units, smaller units of what we could see called atoms was just a theory. That was a hundred years ago. Hmm. So I'd like you to consider that the one thing you can count on with probably 100% certainty is that a hundred years from now, probably less at our current rate of understanding, everything we might currently believe now will seem as ludicrous as the unquestioned truths that we took on for hundreds of years. Do you guys get that? You think history might be a little bit of an indicator? You think history might have something to teach us? And if that's true, 
then how much about ourselves have we yet to figure out? What do we really know right now? Your body is a freaking miracle. Somehow, it knows how to make babies, digest food, has billions of cells, sending billions of communications to each other all at the exact same time, and nobody has a clue how any of those cells know how to do any of what they're doing. We can't explain any of it. Not really. It's a miracle when you really think about it. A miracle. What more are we going to figure out about ourselves as we just start to get the technology, we just start to get the distinctions to even look at what we are at these deeper fundamental levels of life? Some exciting stuff might be on the way. How much is still left for us to discover and what are the possibilities when we do? I've got a short film that I'd like you to watch just to get the gears turning a little bit and then we'll take it from there. Quantum mechanics allows the supreme mind. The brain is capable of millions of neural nets. Cascades, biochemical, and emotional response. Molecules of brain. The brain does not know the difference between what it sees in its environment and what it remembers. We are running the holodeck. Whatever way we observe the world around us, so how can you continue to see the world as real if the self that is determining it to be real is intangible? Who are we? Where do we come from? What should we do? And where are we going? Why are we here? Well, that is the ultimate question, isn't it? What is reality? What I thought was unreal now, for me, seems in some ways to be more real than what I think to be real, which seems now more to be unreal. Every age, every generation has its built-in assumptions that the world is flat, that the world is round, etc. There are hundreds of hidden assumptions, things, things we take for granted that may or may not be true. Of course, in the vast majority of cases, historically, these things aren't true. So presumably, if history is any guide, much about what we take for granted about the world simply isn't true. But we're locked into these precepts without even knowing it oftentimes. That's a paradox. Asking yourself these deeper questions opens up new ways of being in the world. It brings in a breath of fresh air. It makes life more joyful. The real trick to life is not to be in the know, but be in the mystery. not what we have long thought it to be. Uh, to the scientist, matter has always been thought of as sort of the ultimate in that which is static and predictable. Within all the atoms and molecules, all the space within that, the particles take up an insignificant amount of the, of the volume of an atom or molecule, the fundamental particles. The rest of it is vacuum. I like to think of space as empty and matter as solid. But in fact, there is essentially nothing to matter whatsoever. It's completely insubstantial. Take a look at an atom. 
we think of it as a kind of hard ball. Then we say, oh, well, no, not really. It's this little tiny point of, of really dense matter right at the center, surrounded by a kind of fluffy probability cloud of electrons popping in and out of existence. But then it turns out that that's not even right. Even, even the nucleus, which we think of as so dense, pops in and out of existence just as readily as the electrons do. The most solid thing you can say about all this insubstantial matter is that it's more like a thought. It's like a concentrated bit of information. What makes up things are not a more things, but what makes up things are ideas, concepts, information. looking it's like a wave when you are looking it's like a particle when you are not looking there are waves of possibility when you are looking then there are particles of experience a particle which we think of as a solid thing really exists in a so-called superposition a spread out wave of possible locations and it's in all of those at once the instant you check on it it snaps into just one of those possible positions quantum superposition implies that a particle can be in two places, two or more places or states simultaneously. And this is a very bizarre concept and one of the hallmarks of the quantum world. This is the only radical thinking that you need to do. But it is so radical, it's so difficult, because our tendency is that the world is already out there, independent of my experience. It is not. Quantum physics has been so clear about it. Heisenberg himself, co-discoverer of quantum physics, said atoms are not things. There are only tendencies. So instead of thinking of things, we have to think of possibilities. There are all possibilities of consciousness. Quantum physics calculates only possibilities. But if we accept this, then the question immediately comes, who, what chooses among these possibilities to bring the actual event of experience? So we directly, immediately see that consciousness must be involved. The observer cannot be ignored. We know what an observer does from a point of view of quantum physics, but we don't know who or what the observer actually is. Doesn't mean we haven't tried to find an answer. We've looked, we've gone inside of your head, we've gone into every orifice you have to find something called an observer, and there's nobody home. There's nobody in the brain. There's nobody in the cortical regions of the brain. There's nobody in the subcortical regions or the limbic regions of the brain. There's nobody there called an observer. And yet we all had this experience of being something called an observer, observing the world out there. What is the physics of consciousness? We can ask that question today. What is consciousness? Where does it come from? What are the origins of consciousness? What are the limits of human potential? We're in a position to actually answer that now, I believe, although there's certainly not consensus yet in the scientific community about that. But with the real cutting edge knowledge, the discovery of the unified field, the so-called superstring field, we now understand that life is fundamentally one at the basis of all life's diversity, there is unity. At our basis, you and I are one. Progress in our understanding of the universe through physics over the past quarter century has been exploring deeper levels of natural law, from the macroscopic to the microscopic, from the molecular to the atomic to the nuclear to subnuclear levels of nature's functioning, so-called electroweak unified scale, grand unified scale, super unified scale. And what we've discovered at the core basis of the universe, the foundation of the universe, is a single universal field of intelligence, a field which unites gravity with electromagnetism, light, with radioactivity, 
with the nuclear force so that all the forces of nature and all the so-called particles of nature quarks leptons protons neutrons are now understood to be one they're all just different ripples on a single ocean of existence it's called the unified field or super string field and it's a mathematical tour de force but we have realized einstein's dream he dedicated half of his life to discovering this unified field and now in the context of the super string that has been achieved everyone who's grown up in the scientific world is used to the concept that we're living in a material universe an inert universe a universe of dead matter and because of that <clears throat> it's difficult instinctively to grasp that we're not really living in a dead universe, that the universe is overwhelmingly conscious at its basis. See, what we have seen and studied for 300 years of classical physics is what we call billiard ball mechanics, macroscopic physics, classical physics, the physics of billiard balls, cannonballs, and planets. But quantum mechanics, even at the molecular level, let alone atomic, nuclear, subnuclear, in the realm of quantum mechanics, the idea of particle is replaced by the idea of wave function. And what is a wave function? Technically, it's a vector in a linear space. But what's a vector in a linear space? What's it made of? What's the substance of nature? Well, a wave function, a vector in a linear space, is made of the same stuff thoughts are made of. We're li really living in a thought universe, a conceptual universe. Quantum mechanics is just play and display of potentiality. So the point I'm making is the deeper you go in the structure of natural law, the less material, the less inert, the less dead the universe is, the more alive, the more conscious the universe becomes. The quantum world, quantum mechanics, is really the play and display of information, the play and display of potentiality, waves of information, waves of potential electron and it's important the word potential this isn't the world of electrons it's the world of potential electrons but when you have you have to ask the question waves of what really what is the field that is waving is it the ocean no it's a universal ocean an ocean of pure potentiality an ocean of abstract potential existence we call it the unified field or super strength field and that's what we're made of. So, as you said, the tighter physics have tried to grasp on to physical reality, to understand what it's really made of, what are the core building blocks of life, at the basis of it all. Life, the universe, slips through your fingers, and you come up with something that's increasingly abstract, increasingly abstract, to the, come to the realm of pure abstraction. And that's what the unified field is. It's pure abstract potential, pure abstract being, pure abstract self-aware consciousness, which rises in waves of vibration to give rise to the particles, the people, everything we see in the vast universe. It's interesting. That's all it is to me, is interesting. See, a warrior never takes any view to be reality, remember? We had that distinction, that talk yesterday. I have no idea what reality is. All I have is this view, which never can be it. But the view that we do have determines the actions we take in life. And you get to choose what you want your view to be. You get to choose how you view yourself. And how you view yourself will determine the actions that yourself takes. I'm merely intrigued by the fact that at our most fundamental level, we may all be infinite possibility. 
I'm intrigued by the fact that the more science breaks down matter, they get to a point where matter doesn't even exist and there's just a unified field of infinite possibility. That's intriguing to me. And hmm. you get to choose how you see yourself. And that choice determines so much about our lives. How you see yourself, that choice right there, your view of yourself, determines so much about our lives. And I'd like to share, if I could, something that I think might make us all even more unstoppable. What do you think? Does that sound fun? Beautiful. Can we bring all the lights down? Remove everything from your lap? Put it all down? Get super comfortable? And close your eyes. <sighs> Relax completely. <sighs> Take a big inhale through your mouth and you can let it out with an audible sigh if you want. An audible sigh feels really good. The body releases energy, it releases stress, it releases pressure, it releases tension through sighs. It goes, ah, so you can relax even more. Take a big inhale, the oxygen in the body. And when thoughts arise, just notice them. Do not make any effort whatsoever. Do not try to push thoughts away or think they shouldn't be there. Just let them be. Let yourself continue to relax even more. Feel how nice it is to inhale oxygen into your lungs. Feel the gentle tug of gravity on your body. Feel the earth underneath your feet in the form of your seat and the floor. And I want you to notice that the earth is always there for you. Did you ever notice that every step you take, there it is underneath you to support you, to lift you up? Every step you take, the earth is there for you. Maybe you want to give some quick gratitude to the earth that is literally always there for you. Now, I'd like you to consider for a moment that there may be no such thing as who you are. I know it seems strange, so I'm going to repeat it. Consider for a moment that there's no such thing as who you are. Try on that there's only who you are being. And who you are being takes place moment to moment to moment. You are being. Try on that everything outside of who you are being right now, moment to moment to moment, falls into the realm of identity. And identity is a construct. Identity is a collection. A collection of thoughts, ideas, memories, emotions that you piece together and form a concept of who you are. But a concept of who you are can never really be who you are, can it? It can only be a concept of who you are. Who you are is really who you are being, moment to moment to moment. To look at this more, 
we have to deconstruct the most common precepts of identity and move into a much more powerful world, the world of possibility, where nothing is predefined, where everything is possible. Take a brief moment now to just observe yourself. Just observe yourself. Notice any thoughts that come up. Notice any sensations in your body. Notice your breathing. Notice your hearing. Notice your feelings. Take a moment and just observe yourself. Just be with anything that comes up. Now I want you to ask yourself a very important question. A question that can open up entirely new worlds to you if you fully take this question on. Don't just hear it. Really take it in. Take it on. Bring this question inside your consciousness and take it on. What is it that is observing you? repeat it again. What is it that is observing you? And you might have answered, me. But what is this me? What is me really? Is it your thoughts? Is it your body, your consciousness, your presence, your soul? What is this me that you are, that is there observing everything in your life all the time? To find out what you may be, let's first explore the distinctions of what you are not. These are the distinctions of identity that most people remain trapped in their entire lives. First, I want you to really take in that you are not your body, that what you are is not your body. Your body is a part of you, but it's not you. Your body is not the presence that is sitting here able to observe that it has a body. Take in that you are not your thoughts. Your thoughts, again, appear within your observations. You can observe your thoughts. So clearly you cannot be your thoughts because anything you can observe, you exist prior to it in order to observe it. Whatever thoughts are happening, they are not you. Apply this same distinction to your feelings. You are not your feelings. Your feelings are a part of you. They arise within your consciousness, you. You feel them. So clearly the you that is feeling them is not them. Apply this same distinction to your experiences. An experience is just an experience. You are not what happened to you. You are not what's happening to you. You are not what will happen to you. You are still what's observing it all. Consider that you're also not a memory. What that means is you're not your past. The past only exists as a memory inside your head. Yet what can observe those memories? Here we are, back again, at you. You exist prior to memory 
in order to observe your memories. So you're not your body, you're not your thoughts, you're not your emotions, not your feelings, not your experiences, not your memories. For this moment, just consider that none of this is what you truly are. And in the absence of you being an identity, I want you to simply notice what is still there. What is listening right now? What is feeling the chair underneath you? What is alive? What is this presence, you? If you were to remove this presence, you, your body would wither away and be gone in a matter of days. I want you to really question, what is this you? Really question it. Don't fill it in with thought. See if you can be aware of your awareness. See if you can simply be the observing. And for the next few seconds, just exert a little effort and don't think a single thought. Just let there be space, no thought, for five seconds. Now when you just did that, did you notice that all that's there when you're not thinking, you're not feeling, you're not experiencing, remembering, or doing is a space? In between each thought, each feeling, each moment is a sort of space. But it's not a dead space. It's not a static space. It's an alive space. It's a space that feels like nothing and everything all at the same time. Even as you listen to me now and move throughout your life after this, See if you can notice that this space is always still there. Take a moment now and see if you can just feel this space inside of you. No matter what's happening, what's happened, or what will happen. That space is still there. The space of everything and nothing. Consider that this space might be our self. And it is pure potential. Try on that this space is also a vast, vast mystery more mysterious than you or I could ever imagine. And thus you are a vast, vast mystery. You are more mysterious than you or I could ever imagine. And so is everyone else. Consider that the vast, mysterious space that all your thoughts, all your emotions, everything emerges from is yourself and yourself is infinite possibility you are infinite possibility you can literally be and create anything because you are infinite possibility that's what you are and as infinite possibility your power is vaster than you can imagine. When you remember what you are as infinite possibility, nothing can stop you. And 
since you yourself are infinite possibility, then everything you really want is found inside. All the happiness you've ever wanted comes from infinite possibility, and that's within you. All the love you've ever wanted comes from infinite possibility, and that's within you. All the strength you've ever wanted comes from infinite possibility, and that is within you. Everything you've ever wanted first comes from within you, and then you create it in the world. It's born from the space of infinite possibility. And you can create from pure power, pure possibility, any time, simply by quieting your mind and becoming present to this space within you that is always there and precedes everything. This space is truly unstoppable. And when you're ready, I want you to open your eyes and stand up. And we're going to do a quick exercise. Here's what we're going to do. You all got your partners? Raise your hand if you don't have a partner. You all got your partner. So every, she don't have a partner? Can you partner up? Who's, who's missing a partner? There's a... There we go, three right there, partner up. Here's what we're gonna do. Partner A, choose a partner A. Partner A, you're going to acknowledge yourself. You're going to acknowledge yourself for who you are. You're gonna create that acknowledgement from the space of pure possibility. You can be anything you wanna be right now. You acknowledge yourself for who you are. That's what you're doing, partner A. And partner B, when I say switch, you're going to acknowledge partner A. You're going to acknowledge your partner for who they are. And you're going to acknowledge them from the space of infinite possibility. You can create any acknowledgement you want in them. Acknowledge who they are. And then when we finish that, we're going to switch. Ready? Clear? No? Example. Who wants to be a volunteer? Justin, come up here, brother. Good call. <laughs> okay, so volunteer. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to acknowledge myself. And then when I'm done, you're going to acknowledge me. So this is a little weird, because we're not used to acknowledging ourselves, are we? We're not used to really acknowledging ourselves. Oh yeah, totally, let's get that. We're not used to acknowledging ourselves for who we are. So it's a little weird. <laughs> Gotta stretch that muscle. So ready? Jonathan, you are an incredible being. Jonathan, you are pure strength. You are pure love. You can do anything. I love you, I appreciate you, you can be anything you want to be in life, do anything you want to do in life. Jonathan, you're a gift. Jonathan, I appreciate you. Jonathan, I think you're amazing. I acknowledge myself.
for who I am. And then you acknowledge me from that space. It doesn't need to be anything about me. You can make up whatever you want. Acknowledge how you would like, acknowledge me from just like kind of the way I did. You can be anything, do anything, whatever you come up with. Jonathan, you are absolutely just unstoppable. You've, uh, you're a huge impact on everybody's life, um, more, more so than you know. You have way more potential than even you imagine, um, than you can ever even imagine. Um, you're such a blessing in so many people's lives. They all appreciate you, as well as I. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. And now we do you. I'll take that back. <laughs> so you acknowledge yourself. <laughs> You're doing awesome, by the way. That was so good. He did so good right there. This is totally, absolutely new for me. <laughs> this is the hallmark of a good exercise. <laughs> oh! Justin, you have more potential than you know. You. Even when you doubt yourself, you can do so much more. You don't even have to do that anymore. Um, there's so many people that are supporting you. You have more love in your life than you even know. And with that, there are truly unlimited possibilities. Justin, you are an incredible human being. You are an incredible human being. I appreciate you so much. I love who you are so much. I feel so blessed to know you, so blessed to be in relationship with you. I feel so blessed that you're in my life. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of who you are. I'm proud of you being here. I'm proud of the direction you're going in. I'm proud of everything you're doing. You are a special person. You are an amazing person. You can do anything you want to do in life. The sky's the limit for you. I believe in you. I always will. I'm here with you, and I love you. Thank you. So, now you got it? Now you got it? 60 seconds a piece. So just keep going until I say switch. Ready? Partner A, you're going first in three, two, one, go. Don't stop acknowledging yourself, even when you're not sure what to acknowledge. And switch partner B. Acknowledge partner A for who they are. And now we're going to switch partner B. Partner B. Start acknowledging yourself. So partner B, you are now acknowledging yourself. Now partner A, 
acknowledge partner B for who they are. Okay, if we don't wrap it up pretty soon, I don't want to stop it either, but we do got to get to dinner, and we do have somewhat of a show tonight, and we aren't done yet. So we got to keep... Real quick, guys, let's ground this exercise. I mean, they're pushing me along here, ye old production team. I'd be sitting up here for the next hour just basking in this if I could. So I know you already got it, I can feel you already got it, but on page 80, I want you to take three minutes to write out your new unstoppable view of yourself. You can have your view be anything. You can invent anything for who you are, because at this point, you might just take on, or you might have taken on, that you are infinite possibility. I just wanted to tell you guys that I love you. <laughs> so I wanted to tell you guys. And be mindful of the space. You know, keep, there's, a, there's a certain space that's here right now. Oh, that space. Remember that space thing? Be mindful of the space right yeah. now. Trim. And I can't wait to see you guys after <laughs> dinner. All right, brother. <laughs>